Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny, fueled by Monster Energy. Yo, are we live? We, we live? are live Woo! from X Games. Check, check. This thing on? Oh, it's on. Oh, it's Is it on? on? Loud and clear. It's on. Guys, we're officially um, on location at Aspen, Colorado. Woo! Yeah. How you doing, Danny? <laughs> I'm doing fabulous. Are you kidding me? X Games is like my favorite time of the year. People keep asking if, uh, can we turn that down? People keep asking uh, where you, uh, you, you missed the promo. So I'm wondering if you've really been a uh, big booted. Well, I have a few other jobs. So I was working with the U.S. team over at Copper Mountain Bingo. Right. But also, I didn't even get invited to the promo shoot. So well, apparently a cardboard cutout of me is enough. I don't know. And then we have Brittany Palmer here as usual. Thank uh, you, Brittany. Thank you. She is back. I'm back. I know we missed you yesterday yeah, I, in that little promo. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I missed the texts from all of you. <laughs> and then we have our first dual um, interview. This is going to be our first kind of dual interview that we've ever done. But we have Colby Stevenson and Maggie Voice. And give it up. Woo! Cow goes crazy. <laughs> Not to be confused with dual slalom. These are some of the best skiers in the world on the freestyle aspect. Looking at kind of achievements here, um, Maggie, you are a seven-time X Games medalist, two gold, two silver, three bronze. And we were trying to figure out earlier, is this your 11th appearance here or is that you first came to X Games at 14? 15. 15. 2014 was my first X Games here in Aspen. Um but honestly, it's it's is that bad? I don't know. No. Eleven sounds like it could be right. We're trying to like, do European X Games count? I want to say yes. I would so say 11, yeah. Eleven sounds right. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah. We'll say eleven. Eleven sounds nice. Yeah, eleven. We got some number. footage here that I'm dropping in. Hopefully, it pops up on the screen. Oh yeah, some boss nine, some two sets. Oh yeah, that's me. What I like is like the open air. The open air. Well, just like the kind of like, let me go back to it. It's almost like you kind of, you do almost do like a, see what I'm saying? Like I a know, Superman right. into the grab. It's My like hands are in the air? <laughs> no, I like it. Hand. I like it. Look at it. That's got style. That's yeah. real style. Oh, thank you. Now. And if anybody knows style, Danny Cash knows style, two-time Olympic silver medalist <laughs> and many <laughs> X Games medals. How many X Games medals you got? I think I have nine. I only have one gold though. In my debut performance. That's a little weird, right? You got gold. You're a rookie. Rookie. Rookie gold. Rookie-ish style. Well, I was told going into X Games that your rookie, like, the rookie curse was getting silver. Uh -oh. oh, no, no. That's the Olympic curse. Oh, well. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't get that. Kobe, <laughs> what, what, what kind of curse that did you get your rookie curse. year? Uh, rookie year at the Olympics was a silver, but uh, <laughs> X Games was gold. Yeah. Two golds, great. right? Two golds. <laughs> That's uh, that's no rookie curse there. No. I know. I, I mean, have you won gold since? No. Well, maybe it is a bit of a curse. <laughs> no, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. But I uh, definitely had something to prove because uh, I felt like I deserved the invite earlier than I got it. How uh, much? Uh, we're going to drop a bit of footage here of Colby on the screen. Boom. The flip to rail thing, that's uh, that's technical. That's super technical. How do the judges look at that? Yeah, that one doesn't come out very much because there's not always a, a big enough ra or a gap onto a rail for it. So I think they like it if you can do it, if there's a course that allows you. Yeah, there's definitely not that here. There's not though. that many options. Not I mean, uh, Jesper Chater's always doing some. Oh, true. He'll probably flip onto a rail. On. Yeah. <laughs> now, Kobe, I wanted to start with not bringing up bad news, but or I just wanted to talk about recovery and really kind of get things kicked off here. Uh, and then here it is. I had a chance to go down and visit Colby while he's in the hospital and it was like it was traumatizing for me he was so slender lost so much weight a lot of us didn't know if he was even gonna be the same kid um just seeing the bandages all over his head seeing how swollen his face was hearing how many surgeries he had to have and how his skull was fractured Prior to him coming home, he had neurological. They were saying, you know, there could be neurologicals. And he had a, a, like a, almost like if he'd had a stroke or a tick on the right side. So he was drooling some. His laugh wasn't the same. He couldn't talk quite the same. 
Yeah, I went from feeling on top of the world to then just not knowing if I was ever going to ski again. It, it was a really tough time. With this head injury, there wasn't... There's so I don't want to kind of drag it out. Obviously, you've had to look and go over that a lot recently. And 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 with with what I want to like is, dude, that is so awesome to be back, be back at a competitive level, to be back on top of the world, to be able to 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 go through something like that that is life altering, but then to be able to come right back to, you know, yeah, the world that loves you, the people that love you, and a sport that obviously has kind of given you everything that you stand for. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations. So just, cheers. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's huge to work There was a lot of unknown and yeah, definitely a lot of the time I wasn't sure if it was gonna, if I was gonna come back. And so that was tough, you know, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, not knowing, yeah, trying to make other plans for life, but always having that determination and hoping I could get back to it. Um, and here you very are. Very lucky, very lucky and, uh, yeah, just, just on my righteous path. Of <laughs> Is that what you think? Like, what pushed you forward to, like, want to come back after that? Like, what was that feeling or that Yeah, I guess, situation? like, I just kind of realized, like, the body heals. Like, I was so messed up. Like, if I didn't have good healing power that I would never have, like, basically l walked again. So, kind of just took that into skiing. Like, oh, like, if I get an injury, I'm just going to heal from that. I mean, I was 18 at the time, so um, definitely had a lot of my career ahead of me and uh yeah as soon as i was able to get my muscle memory back and like get back on skis that's when i was like all right like it's game on yeah like, I, if wow. i can survive that like i can survive anything kind of is what i thought and uh obviously like <laughs> a little more calculated since then but yeah just uh just doing what we love and nothing was gonna stop me at that point and it's gonna continue to do it so that's incredible i mean so what a road to recovery right like and must have been months almost years right yeah i mean for sure like i don't think my neck will ever be the same after that you know i shrunk an inch in the oh. in the wreck like I was, Did you really yeah i'm like back to what i was i'm six two and i shrunk to six one and i've actually um got, <laughs> i'm back <You're> <laughs> and is that ass. just like compression <laughs> yeah just from compressing my neck and like my skull so much yeah so you're like your physical therapy i mean you're just constant yeah yeah for sure wow yep well, you, you got know. one of those like upside down hangers yeah inversions. yeah i bet yeah the inversions I, I that's what's i need up. to get one of those because yeah. you're still six inches taller than me yeah. <laughs> eight inches actually yeah i hear if you do it for a whole year like you might you might gain an inch really i think Really? I really? Know. I don't know if that's a fact. I'm just fucking with you. Really. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Well, Wait. we had a couple questions. Um, if we can ask. Yeah, you they can wanna go. Know, they want to know the craziest places you've ever skied. Oh. I mean, right China? off the top of the head. <laughs> yeah, China yeah. was insane. Uh, but Alaska, I got to say. Is Wait, did you both say China? We were just joking. <laughs> that was the Olympics? Yeah. See, I went there in 2006 when they did the Arctic Challenge quarter pipe thing there. And it was like negative 20. It was freezing That's in China. That's what I heard. Yeah. I want to say the day that we had slope finals for the Olympics, it was like negative 15 degrees. So not quite as cold. But I mean, I'm not usually going to go and ski slope, let alone ski my hardest run when I'm, you know, cold to the bone. Freezing. <laughs> yeah. How was that experience for both of you guys? Because it was middle of COVID and it was one of those, you know, I think it was uh, Dusty Henriksen who like literally like couldn't pass a COVID test, was like trying to pass, trying to pass, trying to pass. The plane left without him. And then I think he came yeah. on like a separate plane, but just the technical difficulty that COVID has brought into the world and then having to um, train, let's say for that four years leading up to it, and then it's the biggest moment of your guys' career that happens at that time. And then having to deal with all this extra crap kind of. It was, you're just totally along for the ride. It was more just like, well, hopefully I don't get COVID so I can, you know, get on this flight to China. And then once you're there, it was just like, we're sticking in our bubble and just hoping that something crazy doesn't happen. Cause then you get sent away to like a, a room of solitary confinement for 10 days and miss your <laughs> events and stuff. So it was more just like, well, we're doing what we can. Um, if, if we get screwed, then that's what happens. You know, it's it's just. And then people don't really are unable to really see it on TV. But a, it's like rock hard conditions, and and b that 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 course was, that those jumps were big, right? Yeah, it was a, it was a big course. It was a big sure. course for sure. And the thing that was really tough 
was that the wi- there was always like a constant wind, but it never was a headwind or a tailwind. It swirled. So you never really knew like, like let's it'd be say blowing up. Yeah. Times. So on the last jump, let's say you would go in and do the same speed and you'd barely make it. And then you'd go up for your second run. You do the same speed and you just go to the bottom. So like the wind directions were just constantly changing. And for me, at least mentally, that that really kind of that was tough. Yeah. But. but. And yeah. then what about. Go ahead. I was just saying, yeah, the COVID aspect is just a whole nother <laughs> realm, adds. like added to the the challenge of uh, the conditions in China, you know? Yeah. Super and- cold, super windy. Um, not an environment we'd ever skied in. You know? Yeah, and your friends and family couldn't be there. So it was a, it was a different experience for sure, but uh, grateful that, that it happened, of course, and uh, made the most of it. That's what you got to do. Make the most out of what you got. Ooh. And then making the, speaking about making, making the most of things, we're here. It's X Games week kicking off. Um, how are the conditions for you guys out there right now? Oh, today was a beautiful sunny day in Aspen. It doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> yeah, second day on the slope style course for us. And we got the morning training today. So it was like bluebird, no wind, like perfect training day. Like got 25 runs on the slope style course in uh, three hours. Yeah, the sleds were just lapping us. Like it was insane. Do you guys find being on skis, you're able to go a little faster than the people on a snowboard? What do you, what do you think? Um, they they think we do. I mean, I don't really know. I've I one time I told Sean White, like he asked me what the speed was for this jump. I was like 16 at Keystone, and I remember I was like, "Yeah, dude, it's like a couple turns." And he went, and he just overshot the whole jump and exploded. And I was like, "Sorry, man." He's like, "Yeah, I don't know, like." My board's fast. I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like <laughs> you were also sixteen. He might have been like bigger than you, a little heavier. I do that, know that's a snowboarders. Fact. He's definitely like, not six two. Yeah, <laughs> snowboarders got to like edge um, on their on their tricks. They got to like come off one edge and carve a little bit to like get. Yeah, their, uh, we don't. We can yeah. go straight. So you guys what are just straight flat think? foot. I mean, it depends on what tricks we do. We, well, we carve too, but what, like, yeah. What are we doing? We need to just. I don't know. Then. I mean, every time I <laughs> snowboard, I mean, I either overshoot or knuckle, and anytime <laughs> I get on skis, I usually just shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I like getting on so, skis because you can go I super would say fast. They feel a lot faster you to me. Okay, fair. They feel fast. I'll take your word for I it. I get on skis every once in a while. I, I want to see you on no, skis. No, I went on a family vacation once uh, to uh, Deer Valley and I wasn't allowed to bring my snowboard. Yeah. So I got a ski instructor and said, listen, dude, I'm here for three days. I'm not allowed to snowboard. I want to go as fast as I fucking possibly can. He's like, I got you. And literally, there's like, me just ragdolling, like losing everything. Yard yeah. sale, like as fast as I can go. One inch catches, lose both my poles, both my skis. Yeah, like, it's a lot of things to hold. A lot of things That's to a hold. Lot of things. Do you have any ski advice for new time newbies? Like first timers, I would he, say just get out there and uh, start progressing, getting on the you know greens, blues, working up to black, like riding the black diamonds, and then uh, getting in the park, sliding some little boxes, hitting little jumps. Yeah, you don't want to go step to some some big jump right away. You're gonna probably have a bad time. Baby and, steps. Yeah. Growing up in New Hampshire, what what was your local? Um, we would go to Vermont, so we'd go to like Stowe, right, and Killington. Uh, so they had pretty legit parks. Yeah, but I was, I mean, I was only a grom. Like I wasn't even in the park when I was back there. I was like four years old. So a grom. Grom. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 25. Dang. Okay. No, you're 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 right though. You passed the hump. Mm-hmm. And you're yeah. 24 now. I'm 24. Yes. And you're a veteran. I'm a veteran. How does that feel? That feels <laughs> wild. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, out of all the girls uh, competing in uh, ski slope, I've been doing it the longest, and that feels weird. Is it true that you're the only American to win gold in slope? I, apparently. That's weird. I looked at that and was like, "Is that a typo? Really? I, I no. It's it. It is true. Um, and that was in 2018. When I won the gold in Aspen, yeah. Where are U.S. women's slope style is at? Free ski. Is they're at? here. They're all. They're incredible. I and mean, then there's a lot of strong uh, female ladies, um, and I think that's just what's tough. I mean, from Canada, you know, the U.S. for sure, but but Europe. I mean, the field is just strong from all over. But um, and there's, then there's grown, some groms coming up for growing sure. up in Montana. What was your local? Whitefish Mountain Resort. Whitefish. Originally, Have we been to Whitefish? Yeah, that's the one we went. We to. love Whitefish. Yeah. We did this thing where we camped on a um, um, teepee farm. Yeah. Where was they that? Grow teepee the farm. Indian Reservation. In Browning. You yeah. were in Browning? Yeah. yeah. We took, uh, okay, you're on the east like side. Like seven or eight. Um, Eddie Wall, Peter Lyon. Like took a bunch of shred dogs. From Browning yeah. snowboarding and taught them. No way. And, uh, but we did camp in the teepee and they just set it up for us and it was like 
maybe March or something, and uh, it was so cold. Oh, I bet it, it was negative fifteen. I did never you thought like I was gonna fire die. or anything. Yeah, and that was even scarier because we're all in sleeping <laughs> bags, like right next to it. Oh, oh yeah. no! I was like, we're gonna catch on fire. Wait, that's pretty rad though but, that you did uh, that. It was really cool, and we did a, a big giveaway like at the high school there, which was cool. Okay, we loaded a motorhome up with all these old. Oh, that's special, honestly. And uh, but the mountain, the trees at the top of Whitefish, it's like really special. the snow ghosts. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Dingo kept going around, going, "Look at them! They all look like penises." <laughs> <laughs> we were super excited about like the shape of those trees. They were just covered in snow, and they looked like penises. Uh, a sh oh. Here we go from you, you pick Syria, Maggie. How did you get started in your career? Well, growing up in Montana. Um, not much, not much else to do in whitefish than just ski. So, so no, I, I grew up with a ski or in a ski family and I have a twin brother and a brother's two years older. And then I have a sister who's eight years older. So I obviously kind of grew up more with my brothers. Yep. Uh, my sister and I are very close now, but so I was a total tomboy. Just chase the bros around. And yeah. I was going to say, even when you're talking about how to get good, I feel like, you know, I was, I was just skiing with people or I would say my brothers, they were know a little bit better than me and that pushed me yeah. um and then from there when i was around nine ten years old i joined the local freestyle team and i just fell in love with it and honestly it just kind of took off i knew that it was what i wanted to do um had you done any like freestyle tricks before or did you just see what they were doing you're like that's cool want to do it or did you i mean, just doing stuff i grew up just ripping around the mountain yeah. if you've been to whitefish like our terrain parks aren't anything impressive but the all you know the, the skiing is great so i feel like i really had the fundamentals of being like you know a, yeah. a, a good skier like, all around flip. i'm just gonna flip right yeah now. yeah and then <laughs> yeah seeing my brother and some of my good friends like they were crushing it and okay. i was like oh, i want to be as good as them but i mean i wanted to be better than them <laughs> well, <laughs> so. i think that's happened at this point look at you. yeah oh for sure I, i've surpassed them <laughs> <laughs> And then when when did it transfer from it being a fun thing to like, oh, shit, this is like going to become my job? So when I was 14 years old, I moved to Park City, Utah. I got a host family. Um, and so I would say around 14 is when I knew that the park skiing and, and whitefish it just wasn't enough. And if I really wanted to progress my ski, I needed to move to Park City, which is where Colby mostly grew up. Um, and we... We, that's when we met when we were mm -hmm. well you were probably 15 like third, I was or gold camp like right yeah we were around millions. this time like maggie was coming up she was like way better than anyone her age like she was doing tricks that all the other pros like were doing that were in x games and stuff we were like this girl is coming <laughs> up like yeah i but, remember that so vividly like oh, that man. mammoth camp where you're just like doing like nines and stuff on like this like, massive jump years old. Yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah yeah i just loved it it was fun i mean i still love it so yeah what i would say though when i was 15 yeah. is when i i got on the u.s ski team that was my first my rookie year yeah. at x games i got silver i made the the u.s olympic team um and went to sochi and that was like the debut for ski slope oh wow so, yeah it all just kind of happened 15 Bam. years old mm -hmm. so you've done three olympics now i've done three olympics that's I crazy mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and you've done Russia. Before. Hang on. You've done Russia, South Korea, and China. In China. Interesting. Yep. What did you do? Italy and Park City. Yeah, I did Italy and Park City. <laughs> you got the good. Italy the, was really cool, though. Italy was uh, sick. That was your second gold. Second silver, sorry. Oh, it's kind of a gold. Yeah. Well, Sean, that was Sean's <laughs> first gold. Yes, Sean's first gold. I'll never forget Sean's dad, Roger, at the bottom of the pipe that day, uh, stole my beer. Really? <laughs> yeah. Just Never ripped it out of your hand? Beer, ripped it out of my beer and just chugged the beer. Huh? I mean, that was a life-changing moment for Can Sean. I think that was a life-changing moment for extreme sports. Like, that was 2006 to that 2010 was, like, the big boom of kind of action sports and Sean kind mm -hmm. of becoming that, you know, that whatever, the flying tomato it was. Danny, did you yeah. think you should have won? Um, yeah. Was there some bad judging? <laughs> The he should have won the first one. The he should have won Park City. But, um, but Park City, he should have won. I did chase him like all winter from way far behind, and then that day it was point two off. No, yeah. point two. Point two, <gasps> two completely and different. Sean, all oh, everyone knows. Sean always gets an extra point one. So you never yeah. know, you know. But um, <laughs> no, I was just pumped because like actually for that one, I'd put a run together that I could never actually do in practice. So I knew like if I land this run. That will be the best I can yeah. do because mm -hmm. I've never like 
you know, I always that's, had it in two segments and then I finally like put it all together. So that's it was the dream. really cool. I was going to say result and he had aside, to a bit, but that had to feel really good though. It was for really yourself. Cool. Just, so it was cool because I never got to compete much in, in Europe at that time. There wasn't mm -hmm. a lot of European half pipe competitions. And I remember I had a, one of my best friends, Giacomo Crotter was from Italy. Yeah. And for finals, cause I did win qualifiers. Anyways, <laughs> so anyways, but Giacomo oh, Crotter, man. Giacomo Crotter dropped in like three people before me. And at this time, the stadium was like finally full yeah. and it was like the loudest thing I ever heard. And I was like, holy crap, like that's a lot of pressure. And he went huge and kind of like washed out on something. And then a few people went and it quieted down. And then I, they called my name for like my first final run. And it was like the stadium lit up. And I was like, whoa, like these people in Europe like are fans and they know me. So that kind of really helped yeah. motivate me do the best I could do. That's sure. awesome though. So hopefully when we come into the next Olympics, you guys get that same uh, full stadium vibe. Be insane. Know? Can't yeah, imagine. I hope so. Because watching China, it looked a little, uh, a it was little quiet. empty. It was like quiet and everyone was wearing a mask. Even if they yelled, they could only go so loud. Well, that's what's <laughs> sick about having like full, full We're crowd back. here at X Games. Full yeah. crowd's back, music's back, entertainment's back. The energy, all time high. How much does that mean for you guys to be back in a capacity? Because being an athlete and competing now for the last couple of years, you guys have probably somewhat got used to that not being a crowd or not being entertainment and it all kind of being by yourselves. Are you guys happy to have Yeah, it? that sucked. That was not fun. <laughs> it's weird, right? Yeah, just closed off, like not doing fun stuff after the events, like not seeing your friends and fam at the bottom. Like the, you're just missing that added energy. Yeah. 100%. You know? And then what's your guys' two-part question, but what's your guys' favorite part about being at X Games? Well, I would say it's that energy that like X Games is. I mean, I, I know for the both of us, also coming to the X Games has been a childhood dream. And we've got to relive it so many times over and over again. But it's, yeah, it's that energy and it's, it's, it's just what, what X Games is about. It's, you know, it's the top of action sports. It's what you dream of. Um, and that energy is so real and raw and, oh, it's unlike anything. So just, I know you've been talking about it, but having the crowd back and that, and that full mm -hmm. force, yeah. like vibe. Ooh, I fully I'm agree. so excited. Yeah. And then the second part to that for you guys both obviously growing up watching it like who were the people that you guys looked up to competing here when you were kids yeah i mean i came to my first x games when i was eight years old and i foran the half pipe and i was just like i was so small dude like i could barely make it out of the out of the pipe but i just remember like yeah all my favorite pros like tanner hall was definitely like the king for me as a kid like i was on armada at the time and just uh yeah, I like crowd surfed with my ski boots on. It was like, what did he just do recently? Was it a triple? He did or a quad. A quad. He did a quad backflip. Yeah, footage of Tanner on a quad backflip. On a jump yeah. or yeah. a trampoline. Back on ski jump. On skis. He's incredible. Yeah. He and how old going. is Tanner now? He's my age. I'm 37. Yeah. He's got to be 37, 38. Yeah. So impressive. Yeah. And everything he's been through, like injury wise, like nothing stopping that guy. It's that Montana blood. It is that Montana blood. <laughs> I think he lives back there now. He is back go. in Montana. Yep. Yep. But we, you know, back in the day with Grenade, he was the only skier or the first skier that was like a full grenade, like mm -hmm. rep grenade was part of the crew. He was just like always like one of us. So which, dope. Yeah. Dude, I had the grenade like uh, furry white, like Yeti mittens. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Back in the day, they were so sick. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we I had a pair of those for tomorrow because it's going to be a little chilly. <laughs> it's going to be cold. It's it's cold. Um, do you guys have a favorite feature in the slope right now since you've been practicing it? The money booter, bro. Always. The money booter. That's mean? the last jump. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So The last couple years, the money boot has been the big air, and then they've gone back to having a big air and – a yep. money booter, right? Yeah, which is way better, I think. It is, yeah. Yeah, the big air jump is when it's built on its own is always bigger and better. And just to like to have that only jump and then you have the slope style it like t is a different thing and it's better to have, yeah. And I think last year, at least for the ladies, they didn't usually when, when the big air jump is separate, they'll groom the landing before the event. Yeah. And last year we didn't get that. So it wasn't like that fresh yeah landing fresh corduroy. and that honestly makes a huge difference it's so nice when the landing is just perfect it's yeah it's softer so, too it's yeah. no fun when there's bomb holes on yeah. the landing right mm -hmm. and it, i will say though at least for me it was like double training because you could hit the big air jump in your slope run 
Like I, I you, you know, I got like that extra practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that was nice, but nah. The, the big air jump is meant to be separate. It's, it's dope in the slope style course this year. They brought back the shark fins. and if people You guys like those? Yeah. I mean, it just adds like a whole nother. Like, I feel like um, you get extra points for those. Like if you do like a serious <laughs> trick off the shark fins. Well, you have to. There's no other oh, option. Oh, there's, no there's no other choice. No. He, he used to ski half pipe. I, I'm having that a helps. bit of a moment. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. Where I'm like, there's a reason I don't ski half pipe. But that's what slope's about. You got to. Throw yeah. some curveballs in there. It's, it's always different. Both. It's good to do both at well, least to a certain point. So late in my career, I'm learning yeah. that I probably yeah. should have skied more half pipe. Right. <laughs> I mean, it, you, you could have used the Park City one. They had a great one there. They had a great one. <laughs> well, growing up, Whitefish, they had a half pipe. I think they had an 18-foot pipe. But by the time I got into to the freestyle uh, side of things, they got rid of it. Um, and then I remember going to Park City for the first time and I got one foot on the deck and one foot in. This was my first like in a true yeah. super pipe. And I was like, oh, this is terrifying. Did and in you, that moment. Did you splat? No, I survived somehow. You know, just being just like being 13. Yeah, yeah, you can just survive Whatever. anything. <laughs> um, do you guys have any tricks for like eyeing up that money booter? Like when you go into practice, do you like ski by it a few times? Watch a few people hit it. Is there any tricks or do you just... <laughs> follow the guy before i mean he, especially here i know they build the jumps really well so like it's either going to be straight in or like a little carve so and it's way more fun just get the adrenaline just send it first run that is not with a big air jump yeah. i mean i wasn't the first guy to hit it and i saw so the snowboarders told me that like yeah it's just cruisy <laughs> So it's, it's fun to just I'm the don't listen to the snowboard. Cruisy. Okay. It's cruisy. You're good. <laughs> and then we yeah. learn. Cruise down into it. Speed, yeah. skiing, snowboarding. It just doesn't doesn't mix. But he's he was all right. I, I'm the one I watch. I just sit and watch first day of practice for a couple runs. That's your that's your yeah. owl move? Yeah. You kind of watch what's going I mean, on. You watch the people. I've had a knuckle. few knee injuries. I don't need to go too big. I don't need yeah. to knuckle. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to play it safe. Are you like one of those that is, once you know... The, the, the speed for it, you know you got your tricks. You don't need to practice them that much. Now I would say, yeah, I don't need to do it as much. But I would like to do at least – I don't need to do all my tricks in a row. I don't yeah. need to do like a full run anymore. But I do like to, you know, piece my run together and practice for sure. I like that. Yeah. And then what about knuckle hawk? Do you like – is it one of those things that just kind of comes around once a year? Or is it something that you like? I'm like, oh, I'm going to work on my knuckle hawk tricks today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. Cause it may be an Olympic sport soon. Who knows? Yeah, that would be dope. <laughs> um, I would say I just do like knuckle tricks throughout the season. There's not like a one day that I dedicate to it. I mean, maybe I should, uh, but more just like when we come here for the event, we get like a few trainings. Like tonight, like right after this, I'm going back there to do knuckle hug training because we have it tomorrow night. Yep. And like the last two days, I've just been hitting the big air jump. So. Yeah, just gonna ho go dial in some stuff and fucking boost to the bottom of the landing. I would say though, I feel like if we're at a camp or training camp, I don't know, or we're just skiing and and, and the conditions aren't good, you boys are always just kind of yeah. throwing stuff off the knuckle. So it's 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 a fun, like playful thing for you guys too, for sure. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and Kimbo sessions. Yeah, yeah, Kimbo yeah. Kimbo session yeah. is this uh like event in Sweden in, in May every year that uh Kim Boberg hosts at this tiny resort Clappen, and they build this like perfect roller, like the dream roller. Um, I hope that one day they can have that for the knuckle huck event here. Cause you could do so many tricks. Like it's just way bigger and better. Well, let's note that. Let's put that in the suggestion box for 2024. Yeah. We uh, got some, some, some new, some new ownership and I think everything's going to move yeah. forward. Good. Good luck this weekend, guys. Wait, we I love you at Monster question. Energy. I we got it. We got to move on. We, 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 you got one question. Hit they it, wanted to know what you guys have on your headphones, and I feel like they can answer it quick. Yeah, they got it. What's, what's on your headphones when you're riding? Oh, I thought you meant right now. Nas. Oh, Nas was, was today. There we go. Oh, I'm boring. I don't listen to music. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, too much who, who makes your hat? Who makes your hat? Monster. No, 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 no. <laughs> Monster everything. You always have cool hats on. Uh, this one's Brixton. There you go. Yep. yep. I'm a big uh, hat gal. All right. Well, good luck this weekend. Um, finals are Saturday. Slope style finals. And then when are your Saturday. finals? Slope. Women's slope is on Sunday. Sunday. Okay. So you're chilling. Yep. 
I'm chilling. Oh, you're yeah. just you're just maxing, relaxing, eyeing everybody like three off. Three more days of practice. <laughs> we'll see you at uh, I think the sales dinner. Good luck at the Knucklehuck. Good luck this Cheers. weekend. We love you here at Monster Energy. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Also, for we got the new zero sugar drink is out. It's great. Make sure you get that, guys. We got some new guests. Hello there. What's up, Heldor? I'm good, man. How are you doing? That stash is looking good, dude. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Been working on it for a mellow uh, nine years. I was going to say, you haven't done the non-stash for a long time. Nine years. I think so. Yeah, I think it's nine years deep. Wow. It's looking it's, way thicker and darker yeah. <laughs> than when it, you first started. Is there a reason why the uh, it, it doesn't match up? The cup it doesn't match the drapes? I don't know. I, I don't know if there's a reason for that. But, uh, <laughs> But it just kind of kind of happened to my face, I guess. I like that. I like that. And one of Monster Energy's newest newest athletes, Mia Brooks, in the house. Mia, um, traditionally you're from a place where snowboarders really haven't. There's never been somebody like you from the country where, um, you know, I, I first met you at Monsters Hell Week in Switzerland. And um and and your mom who's here as well she doesn't travel without a parent guys it's she has she has she has uh she has her mom here but it's uh it's just, even in that short time we hung out in Australia you won you won that competition I actually have a video here of of that is this it and um you kind of have not not been on the podium now this is Australia Test Cody's Bush stuff. Uh, where you won this rail jam and then um, you have just got off a third place at locks, yeah. which is one of the world's big, biggest snowboard competitions. And then now you're here at, um, at X games competing for your first winter X games. Yep. Um, and 16 years of all 16 years of age. That's, 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 that's a lot to deal with. Yeah. How you feeling? Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've been riding the course today. Yeah, it's pretty sick. I'm like super stoked to be here. It's a dream come true. Yeah. And then and and then the jumps uh the the, the 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 jumps are okay here? Yeah, they're super sick. Like they had to rebuild them obviously cuz the speed's been in a bit like on and off, but um yeah, we were riding it today and it's so sick. Yeah. Obviously you're uh uh I would say probably the, the new uh the, like probably one of the best rail riders in the female competition at that's the, that that line is at the top of the course how important is it for you to link both your rails and your jumps like i think it's important because like obviously you need to put a whole run together and it needs to be super smooth um but yeah these rails and like these jumps like they so like they flow well really nice and yeah, I'm super stoked. Yeah, it's super important that obviously it has like the right, you have the right speed and like the correct rails and yeah. And then it's your first winter X Games. What's what's the most exciting part about being here at in Aspen and being at X Games? Definitely just being here is super exciting. Like whatever the outcome, I'll be super stoked because I'm so grateful that I'm here. It's like an absolute dream. And uh, which project are you filming for this year? We're, so we're going to do a lobster movie this year. Oh, so. how many lobsters will be eaten during the filming of this movie? Um, that's a good question, but not a lot of lobsters actually. No. But uh, yeah, but you never know what's gonna happen on those trips. We got a held over video <laughs> right here. Uh oh. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking? Oh. What is this? Is that a backflip? That was from the movie you made, your movie, like a few years ago. Mm. Man, I feel like for you, when was the last time you competed at X Games? Uh, I competed last time uh, in Big Air in 2015. Yeah. Then I did Knuckle, like I think 2020 or something. So yeah, it's been three years, I guess. So that's so one of my year. favorite tricks right there. Thank you. Thank you. So rumor has it, uh, Austin texted you yesterday and you were like, man, I'm just, uh, I'm just here in the lounge soaking everything up. Yeah, I've been taking full advantage of that uh, rider's lounge. They got so many like high-tech recovery devices and stuff. And I just came from a street trip, so my body is completely destroyed, actually. And uh, yeah, 
<laughs> I'm hoping it's gonna be good for a knock lock, but my stomach is kind of kind of sketchy at the moment. But because you ate too much food in the athlete, yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. I just feel like they have seven different types of soup in here, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've been overdosing in there for sure, but uh, yeah, it's, but in a good way. I like the athlete lounge. I'd like I've taken a nap in there before. Hmm. Massages, yeah, right? All sorts of good stuff. Bunch of yeah, it's just so many different things. Yeah. So how much has X Games changed since the last time you were here? Uh, it's exactly the same. I was, <laughs> <laughs> which is nice, and I like it, man. It's so like they take such such good care of us, and uh, like the vibe and everything. It's so mellow, I I, I think, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the only thing maybe that's changed is that the coaches and stuff is it's even more intense now than it used to be. Right. Again, because, I can feel it's getting even more intense. Because back in the day, did you you didn't you didn't probably necessarily have a coach, right? No, no, we kinda made a little we kinda made fun of all that uh when I was writing X Games with Coach Thunder. Where is he? So he's here too, man. We, so I brought him back. We gotta get him on camera. And we we need him at some point. He's not right here. But he's at the hotel. Yeah, yeah, he's probably at the bar. I, I think he might be. Yeah. He's coaching, <laughs> he might he's be. coaching him how to take a shot. But right then <laughs> go back to this new generation, and then Mia, you, I think, travel with your coach and and have pretty much a full time coach, right? Yeah. And then for you, like, how important is that to, to you? And I, I feel like now it's a standard in our world. Danny's now a coach. Believe it or not. The coolest amazing, guy in the industry yeah. became a coach. That's impressive. Yeah. Can you believe it? That's actually really and impressive. I had like no coaching besides obviously when I was like at a little mountain school. Yeah. But we were a little luckier in our day. I think we had a lot of traveling team managers who like filled that role. So I kind of Ex learned a exactly. lot from like my team managers through Vans and Oakley and having all these really cool contacts that would support me. And just the other day I was like coaching at the half pipe and this girl's goggles were so fogged up. And I'm like looking around like, yo, I don't know. like. I don't know how to touch goggles. Like, this is my responsibility. Like, all right. Like, I'm in my dirty sheath all over there. And, How's oh, your goggle dude. wiping skills? It's, I figured it out, like, I need a kit now. Oh. Because like, there's no, no like, Oakley, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. representation yeah. or, you know, goggle world. We need them out there. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. So you really got to step up that uh, goggle wiping game, I guess, huh? Yeah, it's a big thing. You I want them to invent there. the goggles that you can change and just like hit the button, like if it like shadow versus sun. Oh, like your rear view mirror? On yeah, like, car? I mean, they make glasses She's, uh, that- can... Brittany's very first class, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> well, they make a lot of these pop-out Hey, hey first of all, you can make, you can have actual seeing glasses that when you go in the sun, they- darken so why couldn't they make goggles like that i feel like i, I think they do I think, i'm pretty sure they do yeah there's a good question here yeah. for blt rocker it was more blue the new generation uses coaches and is more competitive with a full team what are some of the differences between a young gun and an old head perfect question for the two of you because you've got the older generation super old generation <laughs> but then you have the new generation of a teenager that is here competing at x games uh i think the new generation is way smarter than we were. <laughs> like on it's, hill or off hill or both? Both, I think. Yeah. Both. I don't think there's an off hill anymore. <laughs> I think they get done competing and they go home. No, no, no. That's not nah, that's not the case either. I, uh, they're they're on it, man. But they're way smarter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they, I feel like they have that balance a little bit more figured out, you know? Mm -hmm. But what but what what would you say though? Because <laughs> I mean, your generation. I don't know. We were all pretty old heads in the sense that like 10% rule was a thing. If you won a contest, oh, yeah, yeah. like anyone yeah. could come up to you in the bar and you had to buy them a drink if you did well. Of yeah. course. And now if like you say that to a young kid, like they'll not kid or even like a 22 year old, yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. that's not a thing. And I'm like, <laughs> it is a thing, man. But then me, I like, what do you think? Like, uh, being up the top and getting ready for competition or like you're in practice right now. Yeah. Um, uh, having your coach there makes you feel more secure? Yeah, I think like having a coach, it just makes it feel like, like obviously you have someone to guide you through it. If you're like, oh, I'm not sure about this or I'm not sure about that. Like there's someone there to sort of put, like have their input in it. Um, but yeah, I definitely like having a coach around, but sometimes I just like to go and lap with my mates. Right. And now as a 16 year old, um, that, that, difference too between just hanging with your friends and 
being competitive, do you yeah. feel like it's obviously you're taking it serious, but do you, it, it, it's still probably like a lot of fun for you just to show up and I'm here. I'm yeah. stoked to be here. Yeah. I think like for me, there's never been sort of like, right, concentrate now. Like it's always just been go snowboarding and go and have fun. So. And I've got to ask, where did the rail skills come from? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> just, <laughs> just going and lapping in the indoor snow domes in the UK and obviously being in lakes for a few seasons. So growing up in UK, obviously there's not many mountains. So you grew up dry sloping kind of yeah. or indooring? Yeah, mainly indoor. Like the closest one to us is like 20 minutes away. So Yeah. yeah it's pretty sick. But it's funny because when you're on rails, it just looks like you're at home. <laughs> yeah. I've never not seen you not comfortable. And I think the funniest thing or the best thing when people ask me about you or I explain my first experience was uh, me here at Hell Week and every 15 minutes, you just hear this crazy gaggle <laughs> and you'd look up and it's me landing on the jump, just laughing, stoked. <laughs> the worst thing about that is it's so true. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen somebody have as much fun on a snowboard as you do. And from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, the laugh is still the exact same at the bottom jump. <laughs> it's actually really bad because any video I look at from how Week, I'm just laughing the whole time. Yeah. That's good though. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. And it was funny because you're, you're, when your mom and you, you guys left, she's like, all right, back to school now. And I was like, well, that's going to be an interesting show and tell. Yeah. What did you do last week? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it literally was. Like, I went back to school and I, like, I couldn't say anything to the teachers. I was just like, oh yeah, just normal week snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. Normal week. Super normal yeah. week. Normal week with the monster squad. <laughs> and then, um, are you, uh, you're from a tiny little place too. Yeah, man. I'm from uh, Akureyri. It's like a town uh, up in north in Iceland. It's like 16,000 people that live there. That's I'm crazy. Like, and I'm actually living outside of it. So I'm in the farm as well. So. And then from Iceland, how many are you? Are you it's, it's like a, are you guys all family? Uh, yeah, it goes up to seven generations. That's wild. Yeah, that's pretty wild. And man. then is it true that there's more snow in Greenland than there is Iceland? Oh, way more snow in greenland because they called it what's, iceland, the so, what's yeah. that facade all about <laughs> because they called it iceland because they didn't want anybody to come over there and they called greenland greenland so people would go there instead interesting yeah well, that's uh, yeah that's what that's what i heard and i feel like you kind of created the snowboard scene in iceland um there was definitely a generation before us but uh i think me and my brother were like the first ones to like actually make it kind of yeah, become pro, I guess you could say. Yeah, put yeah. it on the map, right, as a location. Yeah, pretty much. So that's been so crazy and something that we did never, like, we never expected it to actually happen, you know? So. Because I always know. say that, you know, with Grenade and what earlier on from that 2000 era to like 2010, I always set, feel like that you guys healthily took over from like where we kind of left it. Man, you guys inspired us so much as kids as well. And like, I, I used to be hooked up by a local store that had grenade clothes as well. So that I was so pumped on it. And uh, yeah, you guys are massive inspiration to me and my brother and the whole snowboard scene in Iceland. So I really, yeah, I really appreciate all, everything you guys did. And then it's even cool that, you know, you were able to carry on and create your own brand, Lobster. Yeah, man. And how's that doing? And it's doing well. Like, it's still like a small brand, but uh, we still managed to hook up and like push uh, new riders and help them in their career. And we're doing a lot of fun things like the movie this year. And uh, it's like a fun project that I really want to kind of put more and more focus on, I feel like now. Do you feel like making movies back in the day, you've obviously made some really good ones. But obviously a lot of pressure too, right? When you're at the height or the peak of your career, everybody expects the most out of you. And then going out and having to like recreate or create these tricks or do them in a different way. You've always been very creative with your snowboarding. Do you yeah. feel like as you get older, it's a little bit easier to be creative or a little bit less stressful or it's still like it was 10 years ago? It gets harder for sure. And I kind of I kinda feel like I hit like a top there for a while. And then it was kind of hard to uh, keep it going in a way. I don't know. Like, uh, I kind of felt like I hit a wall that I had to figure out. 
but uh i'm back now and i feel uh, hyped to be snowboarding again and uh like hyped to be filming again so i'm i'm stoked to be back again man sick but uh it de it's definitely hard though because you always want to do better and better and better and just and i've never been competing with anybody else but i'm like i'm an asshole to myself yeah so i really what well, i push myself and you know i re yeah i'd really try and uh, do the best i can sick name of the movie yet or we don't know we are losers too we are losers too yeah. <laughs> it, there's a we are losers one yeah so we made one movie that was called just losers Ooh. and then this is we are losers too i like that thank you mia growing up who did you look up to like uh who, who were your who like idols snowboarders skateboarders probably danny davis yep definitely looked up to him like i remember watching the burton movie i think it was this is danny davis when i was like seven and i remember like the opening scene was him walking here at, like to the x games and that was when my dream of going here sort of emerged and, yeah so definitely danny davis and then since that probably young dolly yeah wow <laughs> yeah. oh yeah Young Dolly, we need to get that guy to X Games. He's got some mad steez, man. Yeah. He makes just like normal park yeah. dorking around like fun and interesting, yeah. you know? And like to your point, right? Being creative on a snowboard is one of the most important things. It's not always about what's the gnarliest. Sometimes it's about like what's the most creative or fun looking. Yeah, that that's just as important for sure. And it's cool to see when like Young Dolly, for example, he, he goes completely his own way, you know, with the clothing style, with the way he rides his snowboard is like, there's no question that that's Young Dolly when you see him, you know? and that's really cool. And he designs his own clothes too, right? Yeah, man. So I heard. Yeah, he's killing. And he has his own drink. I heard. Yeah, like uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's his own uh, mix. Man, he's got like his own crunk man? version. Oh, there you go. It's like a some man. sort of vodka and cranberry. So I don't know what goes in it. It but sounds nice. I heard a bunch of writers come back from locks and they were like, "Yo, we were drinking with Young Dolly." <laughs> they were like talking about him like he was like basically like Jay Z. I was like, <laughs> people like him. Yeah. He kind of reminds me of Trevor Andrews a little bit. We hey, Danny, couple... somebody wants to know if you ever spun a twelve sixty. Um, I I don't think so. Not on purpose. How old were you, me, when you got on a snowboard? Eighteen months old. What? Oh, yeah. You know what? I know your mom, and that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Eighteen <Yeah>. months. Yeah. <laughs> what was your stance? I can't remember. <laughs> Do we have any pictures of that? Is your mom in here? We need a picture of me or eighteen months on a snowboard. That's cool. Age? Uh, I was nine. I was nine years old. Were you a skier before then? Uh, I tried skiing twice, but I, I didn't, I couldn't figure out skiing because it's too much stuff going on. So a lot of stuff yeah, going on. Yeah, got, yeah, I couldn't think. It was, yeah, one thing, snowboard you just well, I couldn't imagine you with poles. That's a lot for you to deal with. Exactly, man. <laughs> and two different skis, like, yeah, I don't know. It didn't work out. <laughs> Brittany, when did you start snowboarding? I was 19? I was 20. There you yeah. go. Yep. Danny? Yeah. I was 12. I started at 12. I grew up such a skate rat, though. Pretty yeah. Well, a lot of people don't know that you like grew up in New Jersey and Florida. I know. It's crazy. Everyone, I grew up in New Jersey and Florida. <laughs> crazy. It's cra is it crazy? I mean, New I grew Jersey up and Florida. Do you know the coolest thing is, is when Danny got his first Olympic silver medal, 2002, um, he's from Vernon, New Jersey, and then Vernon built a sign. So when he would come in, he'd come into Vernon, New Jersey, it was like the state sign or the town sign, and then very proud uh, uh, Vernon native Danny Cass and the Olympic sign. And we are no stoked. And then we stole the sign. Yeah. Well, a few people stole the sign and then they stopped putting it up because it got stolen. But did do you still have that sign somewhere at least or no? I don't. Pat Bridges was a possession owner of it for a little while. <laughs> I didn't want to steal my own sign. Dingo, how old were you? Uh, I, I think I was six. You were six? Yeah, my brother was a skier. My dad grew up on the snow, so I was around, but. At, I, at a quite a young age, I knew that I didn't want to carry those poles around either. <laughs> well, they had another good question in the chat. It said, what was your bucket list trick? Is it, do you have a bucket list trick? I definitely want to try and land a 14 this season. Ooh. Yeah. You got one? Mm, that's a good question. Um, not really. You've done too many tricks. I don't What's your wanna, favorite I don't, trick? What's yeah. my favorite trick? Yeah. Uh, I think front boarding through a kink is one of the best feelings you can do because it's scary right it, not really it's just it feels so nice when it clicks through it feels yeah, good like once so you make good. that first kink yeah. you're in 
All right, Shelby Watts, Mia, what made you want to start snowboarding? <laughs> Nothing. I just got taken to the mountains. There you go. Yeah. She had no choice. She was 18 months. <laughs> yeah, she kind of just good. woke up one day and was like, oh, shit, I got a snowboard under my arm. <laughs> she yeah. probably thought she was like a penguin for a few <laughs> years there. So this is a good one. Uh, BL, okay, something rocker. What do you do when you lose inspiration? Like, example, if where you felt like you hit a plateau. Is there any? I definitely yeah. just go and ride rails. Like just I was, keep going. Yeah, I keep going. <laughs> like, I was in Australia this summer, and... Like I just was having the worst day ever and they had the sickest rail line set up and I just went and filmed some rails and went up the next day and was super hyped to wow keep snowboarding. Oh yeah. Yeah, for me it would be like listening to music and uh watching all the snowboard movies as well. well and even going way back, if I watch like the old old snowboard movies or just the older ones, that's where I feel like I'm getting more inspiration almost nowadays. What's your favorite what was your favorite old school movie to watch? Resistance is like the first one that I got my hands on and yeah. that's that just blew my yeah I mean that's what made us hyped on filming when we saw that that know? was definitely one of the best ever Dingo don't you have some shots in that no no I had shots in video gangs oh video uh, gang. yeah, that was yeah, a good yeah, one too yeah. though that was a good one. yeah 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 um Santa Deliver was like my kind of and that was more even a little bit older but that was like we ha I had that on VHS, and that was the one I rewatched a lot. Yeah, I mean, you can pull one, so yeah. much inspiration from. For me, like Mac Meltdown Project was a huge one, um, and then Upping the Ante was super sick too. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Another one that I got a lot of inspiration from actually was uh, Snowboarders in Exile. Did you guys see that one? No. So sick. Like that's pretty. Like it's pretty old, but they were doing like the craziest tweaks and shifties and like. Yeah, and just exploding in the landing too. Like because shifties used to be a big thing too. Yeah, and then they yeah. went out of style, and now I feel like they're kind of coming back. They, I think For they sure. are coming back. I mean, definitely in some of these big tricks, you know, it's getting uh, more important to have cooler grabs to separate yourself from a lot of people doing similar ten eighties. I think, and shifties definitely one of them. Because I still For get sure. made fun of. I still ride the super wide stance, but like I, I that was I, I, that was. Just what we did back then, and I still kind of run it. People make fun yeah. of me. I, I appreciate yeah. it. I really appreciate that you keep it going. <laughs> His hand, it gets bigger every time you see yes, him. Yes, like every time yeah. you see him, it grows like another half yeah. inch. Yes, man. But then I look at someone like me, and Mia rides quite a small stance. But you probably never even rode a wide stance. I think when I was younger, maybe my dad, because obviously he was snowboarding back in the day. Like he made me have a wide stance, and then as I started riding slope style, I just shortened it a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. But on rails does it make it easier to have a smaller stance you feel like because i feel like you just kind of like you get on there and you just spin around <laughs> yeah and you're like you don't come off <laughs> walking <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the white stance i felt like i used to rock massive stance as well like 63 centimeters or something yeah but then it kind of deletes falling this way right so you can only fall like that almost mm. maybe i don't know does it make it easier to nose press if you have a wide stance I don't think so, really. I don't really think the white stance <laughs> helps with too much, to be honest. But it helps. But it looks steezy. It does look steezy, yeah. though. And everyone just thinks you're a really good snowboarder the wider yeah. your stance is. Hell yeah. Is that all it takes? Yeah, is we got it. Why did my stance? We're going to bring your mm -hmm. stance. I send him videos. I'm like, okay, I know I know what I'm doing, but how do I look cooler doing it? Widen my stance. Widen your stance. Widen All right. Yeah, that's like old school. <laughs> and freeze frame, big kahuna, you know, yeah. when someone's shooting right arm photo, up. point it up. <laughs> Robo Fingers, I already asked you, you said Danny Davis. Who did you look up to growing up? Uh, for me, the biggest like idols, I would say, would be uh, J.P. Walker and Jeremy Jones uh, yep. uh, as, when I was growing up. But then, you think it's cool that Forum's coming back? I'm so hyped on that. Man. That's, that's cool. so cool. So that's going to be interesting to see, like, uh, just to follow that as well. But, uh, but yeah, but then it kept changing, and, you know, like, just with, uh, with throughout the movies and everything, it, you know chances but i would say those are the two main ones well guys it's uh we're kind of wrapping up here compete competition days you're competing what days are you competing tomorrow your finals are tomorrow yeah and then just slope style yeah just slope style and then you're just doing knuckle hawk yeah on That's sunday i think on sunday yeah. knuckle hawk and um any what what, what any new knuckle hawk tricks um 
I have no idea. What's like, in the bag? I, I don't know. I actually, my bag is really empty right now. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I think like, we need to like get some inspiration at the bar I, after I this. Know. It, could, it could help because yeah. like I said, I came from the street trip and kind of destroyed my body. So I've been taking it easy now, but I think I might try and write tomorrow at least. What and I got two days. Maybe some backside off the heels. That'd be nice. Backside yeah. up the heels is sick. When Sage does the backside heel, have you ever done a backside spin off your heels? No. It's scary looking, huh? <laughs> I'd be hyped to see you do hard way back to 70s because you would learn that straight away. Or you yeah. probably can't do that. I kind of might learn it. Maybe. Maybe You, you I'll... got it. You got yeah. it. That would be a fire trick. Thank you, Brittany Palmer, as always. Thank you. Danny Cass, thank you to all the Monster Energy family. Signing out. From the monster, not headquarters, but the headquarters of Aspen. Thank you. <laughs> Come on out, make Hi. some noise. Hi. Unleashed with the Dingo and Danny. Fueled by Monster Energy.